Welcome. Welcome. To the celebrated nightly news of Calaveras, Calaveras County. County. Mm -hmm. Now tonight's kind of a mixed bag. We it have, is a very uh, mixed you know, bag. normally we don't have to talk about real heavy news or crime or, yep. you know, mostly it's natural disasters when we have to do heavy <laughs> stuff, which is bad, but in some ways that's a little different than deliberate willful acts. So, yes. But I guess we'll start off with the first one on county government news. Mm -hmm. um, There's a lot going on. And the top story tonight is that Calaveras County... CAO Tom Mitchell mm -hmm. is heading to Mendocino County, and yes. this is the Mendocino County news release that mm -hmm. um, from today, Ukiah, California, um, Ukiah, California. The Mendocino County Board of Supervisors has appointed Mr. Tom Mitchell, the new Mendocino County Chief Executive Officer, effective October first, mm -hmm. and they are really excited to get Mr. Mitchell. Yes, and well, he it has is a, a plethora of experience. Actually, yes, he San does. Luis Bispo, um, San Luis here. Bispo here. Mm -hmm. And we want to also say um, we wish Tom well, and yes. thank you very much. He's always been very kind to the Pine Tree, mm -hmm. and uh, wish him well, and onward and upward, and it's really kind of exciting. He gets to actually move to a bigger county. Yes. It's along that, that blue that beautiful that blue water thing. Line. Yeah, the co on the coast. The California so, coast. Yeah, and, and as wonderful as Calaveras County is, if you look mm -hmm. at some of the challenges that they've had with fiscal constraints and mm -hmm. stuff in county, mm -hmm. you're going, okay. Calaveras, or let's see, should we go to the, should we go to the oh. coast? Oh, uh, yes. Yeah. Yes. Oh. <laughs> yeah. No, but I uh, want to say um, congratulations to Tom. Congratulations on the on the new job, yes. and uh, it's been it's been an honor getting to know you, and mm -hmm. it's uh, it'll be a lot of fun. And yes. a lot of fun should be a lot of big you know new challenges for him. Yes, and, definitely uh, different challenges. Yeah, and I'm sure he's up for the task. I'm sure he is. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And one of the things that we always admired about um, Tom and his tenure here mm -hmm. is is a big picture guy. He gets Very it. He gets thinking. you know he gets yes. where the county needs to go mm -hmm. um, in mm -hmm. some ways, and I think that's a you know it's a it's a neat thing. But um, you know, congratulations, Tom, on yes. the new on the new position, mm -hmm. and uh, you will be missed. Yes, definitely. Um, also, on to. Uh, I guess news. is the other news. Um, all right, and there is a twenty and a twenty-nine year old Wallace man was uh, uh, believed murdered by a couple by a San Andreas uh, resident. We're going to go over to a couple releases, and this is from mm -hmm. the the Tuolumne County Sheriff's Office because they are happening over there. So, okay, earlier this afternoon, and this is from Lieutenant Dan Bressler. Uh, from the Tuolumne County Sheriff's Office. Uh, early this afternoon, cadaver dogs led detectives to the concealed body as of uh, as yet unidentified male, but they believe it was a Wallace uh, Wallace mm -hmm. resident. Yes. Uh, in the general vicinity of where the truck described was found, basically, there's this area oh, known as like Murderer's Gulch for back mm -hmm. from the 1800s yes. that uh, off of Deer Creek. Um, and off of Ward's Ferry Road over in Tuolumne County. Mm -hmm. um, so the body was concealed and also the truck was pushed off, um, pushed, this appears to be down the embankment as well. Um, okay, and this will go back to the, the, main, the main release from yesterday. Just see so here the, the, the details on this, and you may have seen this in some other media outlets as well. Mm -hmm. Uh, yesterday, detectives working on this case had involved um, had involved had the involved vehicle pulled from the canyon known as Murderer's Gulch. Isn't that really ironic? <laughs> it is a red Just and white fits, uh, Ford it? Ranger pickup registered to um, Christina Flaherty from San Andreas. This is the vehicle has been in possession of John Flaherty mm -hmm. prior to the incident in question, and uh, John Flaherty is the is presumed. To be. to be the body that they are recovering. Um, exactly. Yesterday afternoon, detectives arrested um, arrested David Stanton mm -hmm. and his also his sister, uh, Shawana Stanton, um, and she's been charged with assisting a suspect after the, um, after the initial crimes. It sounds like she helped conceal. Mm -hmm. um, so... Um, Accessory right after the fact. Yeah, and he is... And uh, David Stanton, I believe, is in Tuolumne County Jail on a $1 million bond. Um. So I guess that's it. That's, that's the it that's that. the hard uh, tough news. Is that's that the hard, um, tough news? And those unfortunately affect Calaveras County yes. residents. Mm -hmm. um, both mm -hmm. the 
the victim and also the alleged perpetrator. Mm -hmm. I guess if there is a good thing that they didn't do it in the county. <laughs> so. Oh yes, that's a good thing. <laughs> it frees the, up our sheriff's department to do other things. <laughs> uh, I'm just, I, I, I'm just, I, I don't mean to make light of it in any way, mm -hmm. um, but that is just, um, yeah. yeah. And uh, so it is what it is. It is what it is. Mm -hmm. So that was happened in Murderer's Gulch in Tuolumne County, and it's. It's interesting how these historical names sort of carry through to the modern day. Oh, it really is. And, you know, you know, you know our, our thoughts are with the families because even though, you know, this is this is, wasn't a natural act at all. I mean, it, it's still, it can, I can only imagine the, the grief and the angst that mm -hmm. goes along with something, a violent one. And, um, exactly. <sighs> Okay. That's our hard, hard news. That's the hard news, but you had all the fun, exciting. Sarah got to spend the board today. Of super, the board of vignettes. supervisors. The, the, the yeah, vignettes yes. at the board of supervisors. Yes. And you know what the top story from the board of supervisors no. is? They got a letter of support. Very nice. In their nice. correspondence packet, which Supervisor Russ Thomas pointed out at the very beginning of the meeting that they got a positive letter of support from one of was our this, constituents. Was this a tongue-in-cheek thing? No, they actually received a letter praising no, them. No, I know, but he, did he present it in he, a tongue-in-cheek manner? He presented manner? it and said, wow, look at this letter of support. <laughs> 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 so I thought that that would be an appropriate lead story uh -huh, for board good. supervisors. Um, also, what happened today, actually, like I said, there were a few little vignettes that took place, and... Behavioral Health had a resolution that the Board of Supervisors supported that Calaveras County would, for the month long month of September, participate in Recovery Happens Month, saving lives and saving money, and that's uh, recognizing addiction people who are suffering from addiction and the programs that support them here in the county. And there was a packed boardroom with people who have either been through the program or uh, actually were related to people that are in addiction and coming out. And it was it was actually really very good to didn't see they, that. Didn't they do that last year as well? They Similarly, did that I think last I, year as and well. It was, I attended that one. It was, mm -hmm. it was touching. It was a very... And yeah. in fact, uh, on, let's see, September, let's, I don't have a date here, but in Sacramento, Calaveras County will be on the western side of the state capitol with 5,000 other people at a rally for this particular program. Oh, very nice. Which is kind of a cool thing. And I just want to say, before I get to other Board of Supervisors news, um, in conjunction with this particular month-long celebration, Monday, September 17th, there will be an open house at the Behavioral Health uh, from 12, p 12 p.m. to 2. And people can go there and find out what substance abuse uh, programs there are for recovery in the county hmm. and sort of take a, a tour and um, find out, you know, what these people do, which is actually sort of a very cool thing because they work oh, really yeah. hard and there's a lot of people who benefit from the program. And also on a uh, sort of a related note, um, Behavioral Health Director spoke before the, uh, Rita Downs spoke before the board and she said there's actually a very interesting art exhibit going to start September 10th from 4.30 to 6.30 at the uh, Arts Council Gallery in San Andreas. And what it is, it's, for, it's kids from the youth treatment program with behavioral health and probation and the artwork that they've done. Oh. And so as I part, thought that was kind during of, their, during yeah, their, as part yeah. of their program. And I thought that was a very cool thing. So, you know, kudos to the people who actually work in behavioral health and help these people recover from their addictions and help their families and get them help them get them back on track. Um, they're certainly providing a great service to the community. And also, this is sort of an interesting one. Board of Supervisors uh, allowed Community Development Director to talk to U.S. Fish and Wildlife Services about the possibility of starting a habitat conservation plan in the county. Now, you were mentioning is, is this part of a requirement that the county has to have a this it, type of a program not, in place to, it, 
for some other reason for funding or is there? Well, what they what it will allow is mitigation mitigation credits to come to the county. The state has a statewide mitigation pr credit program. So for endangered species or habitat protection, developers can say, um, I'll use these credits and pay another county for them to have habitat conservation, but then the habitat is developed over in Calaveras County, okay. and we don't have a process in place to actually accept those funds or allow the developers, unless the developers do it voluntarily, allow the developers to say, you know, let's take part of this development and sort of build on the habitat, but okay. I'll take another, they'll take another part of the county and develop a habitat conservation. So this actually, it's a first step in what could be a very long st uh, step to, uh, very long process, I should say, for habitat conservation plan in the county. In the county. And what was interesting was John Buckley from CSERC actually spoke before mm -hmm. the board, and he said that instead of having a habitat conservation plan, apparently in Tuolumne County, they have included certain policies in their general plan to take care of habitat and wildlife species issues. Uh -huh. So there's there's a lot of different aspects to this, but this actually just allows the community development director to talk to U.S. Fish and Wildlife right. about right. the fact that there's issues going on in what in the western part of the mm -hmm. county for species mm -hmm. protection and what could possibly happen um, as far as habitat conservation plan and also talk to them possibly about them saying to us, this is what you need to do for habitat conservation. So that is another little wrinkle in it. So that's sort of an interesting mm. little thing to watch oh, yeah. as, as time goes on. Also, the board approved Calaver Calaveras Unified School District to sell their bonds that were approved by voters last uh, November. $11,500,000 for classrooms, computer technology, expanding libraries, possibly a new theater, and that was approved today as well. And also, road striping. Road striping. Road striping was approved. That, that's a... Which is very... Will you very, say better now knowing the road striping I will, was approved? I will. This is, is what approved. always is interesting to me, though. Public Works takes yes. care of 800 miles of roads in the county, and today... They, it was approved for them, if I can find that little front page, uh, 120 total roads to be striped. Wow. 292.46 miles to be striped was approved today at a cost of $190,992.46. That sounds pretty cheap for that. It does. Miles of it roads. is. They're, I mean, that's they're actually, really... it's a piggyback. Um, I mean, isn't resolution that, it's it's contracting out but uh, yeah pretty, it that is. sounds pretty efficient actually it's very efficient and um, that's hmm. our, our outgoing public works director is very efficient yes now was he was he in attendance today <laughs> he was in attendance okay today. yes yes um, I guess one of the and going back to um, I mean, we know we've had emails and my some opinions is was the fire on Saturday arson Mm -hmm. um, the definitive answer is we'll probably have to wait till tomorrow to know. <laughs> um, it is leaning, and this may change, but from the stuff that we've been able to glean, that it's leaning towards not. Mm. That it oh, may okay. Have been, it uh, may have and just we been. May have, we, we may have, it, we may have uh, inferred stuff wrong, so we may be incorrect as of tomorrow, but that would be our guess as of now. But also the official report will be out tomorrow. Um, mm -hmm from last we heard. And also one of the things is if you go have access to our site, this is a mm -hmm. beautiful little banner. I don't know if you noticed it on the way up the hill. Mm -hmm. Did you see it on the way up the I hill? I did not okay. see it on the way up the hill. Now, if you're coming up but Highway 4, with you. It is a beautiful C, little at banner. CP Financial, mm -hmm. across the whole front, there's a huge banner that says, Thanks, Firefighters. Mm -hmm. Now, this banner was done by the uh, Children's Sunday School class at Chapel in the Pines. Oh, okay. So they did that to, to thank the firefighters for their mm -hmm. efforts last Last weekend. Last weekend. Yes. So um, you'll have to wait till to, we'll have we'll try to know tomorrow as soon mm -hmm. as we can on um, the cause you know the official cause of the fire. Yes. Um, but as of as it looks right now, we don't know we don't whether know. it was officially arson or not. 
Um, and they haven't released the sheriff's logs yet either, have they? Yes, they have. They, they and have. I apologize for that as they were there. I wasn't looking in the right place oh, for the arrest logs. Oh. So, as I spoke last night, the arrest logs were there, and I was just too inept to find them. So, oh, okay. Yes. All right. Here we well, go. You know, better to admit <laughs> it than not. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> Know, the sheriff the was like, "What's he talking yeah, what's about? What's he talking what's about? Yeah, no. Anyway, um, and also um, from the Cog, the um, they're going to have the Arnold Rural Livable Community Based Mobility Plan Workshop Shop tomorrow one. night mm -hmm. at six thirty at the Independence Hall in White Pine. So we'll yes. probably finish up the news yeah. and run over there and 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 do more news. Feel more feel better about our mobility. That's right. Right. That's, yeah. That's right. Feel really good about our mobility. 6.30 to 8 p.m. <laughs> Tomorrow night. And did you have, I didn't want to interrupt you if you're going on to your next mm -hmm. piece. Okay. No, All no, right. no, no, no. Also last night we had the chance to drop in on the Scenic Byway oh, Committee. Oh, that's right. That's right. As they're yeah. getting ready to make their present their, um, their plans for the Scenic Byway Celebration that is upcoming on September 15th. Mm -hmm. And this is going to be a fun event. It's going to start in Markleyville, go all the way to Arnold, or start in Arnold and go to Markleyville. It depends on oops, excuse me, which way you would like to traverse the scenic byway. Oh, wow. And um, there's a little more information on our site, uh, thepinetree.net, if you'd like mm -hmm. to see what's going to happen at each one of the venues. Um, they're going to have um, at Highway 49 at Serafina's Italian Kitchen. Um, That's really gonna, good food there. Yeah. They're going to have, there's, that's going to be the kind of the initial start in Arnold. Mm -hmm. um, there, and also the Calaveras Big Trees State Park. They're going to have um, um, a booth there. The Dorrington Hotel is going to have a booth. The Camp Connell General Store will have a booth. Live, live music. Live music at um, the Dorrington Hotel as well. Mm. Um, Bear Valley Village. We'll have, they're going to have live music up in Bear Valley, Frisbee Golf Tournament, Barbecue Lunch, mm -hmm. and also going to be live music at Lake Alpine. There's basically going to be live music everywhere. everywhere. And also live music at Hermit Valley from uh -huh. Bill Wells and Shiraz with uh, Ron Shaner and Aaron Ross. And well, Alpine, that should be nice, And over in Alpine County, mm -hmm. they're, they're going to have live music at every, every single, single venue. So at Alpine County Museum in Markleyville, they're going to have music provided by the Alpine Trio. Mm -hmm. So it should be a, a very a truly nice scenic, scenic celebration. celebration. Because those are all scenic stops. Yeah. Absolutely. Very so nice. there we go. Very nice. So. And also, if you have trouble with Star Thistle, segueing into something completely different. <laughs> the uh, Calaveras County Department of Agriculture is, off Agriculture is offering a cost-sharing program to private landowners for smooth distaff and yellowed Star Thistle control. And they received $9,500 from the California Department of Food and Agriculture to provide uh, rebates of up to 25% hmm. of the chemical cost to private landowners, which is kind of a cool thing. These um, funds are available from November 1st, 2007 to April 30th, 2008. And some of the stipulations for applications for funds that will be uh, meet the criteria are private land adjacent to the Stanislaus National Forest, any private property infested with smooth distaff thistle, all private land infested with yellow star thistle in major corridors leading up to the Stanislaus National huh. Forest, and all others who control yellow star thistle on private land. In other words, anybody, anybody who controls... Anybody thistle. Yeah, exactly, yellow star thistle. And you can contact the California... Calaveras County Department of Agriculture at 754-6504, extension you know, I 3, if you want to find out more information. I um, actually participated in a thistle eradication program oh, did when you? I was six years old. Oh, really? I did. Did you go out and just pull them? No, it was a thistle eradication program <laughs> that was on a farm down in the valley, and I was paid a penny a thistle. A penny a thistle. That was my, that was the... Um, how did you eradicate the start this With way? a hoe. Oh, yes, with a it hoe. wasn't your hand, it was a hoe. Okay. Yes, it was uh, <laughs> this, it's a thistle. You I know, know it has that I know. bristly I stuff. I thought maybe you had a glove on. No, no, no. This is I eradicated thistle. I was part of a uh, thistle eradication program. You probably eradication left the program. roots in there. 
Did if you I get dug, the roots out? I dug deep most of the time. Oh, okay. Yes. All right. So but I, I probably was a few instances where the the root structure did remain intact, uh, intact after eradication. And bread. <laughs> when I was six, yes. But How I, much did you make? I think I made 10 bucks. <gasps> Wow. We had a, the okay, you got we had 80 acres and zone. there was a lot of irrigation ditches mm -hmm. that needed thistle eradication. And there you were. <laughs> <laughs> Probably not quite as sophisticated as the uh, And it didn't come from government money either. There was did no it? grant money. There was it was basically, you know, it, There you go, kid. Yeah. That's basically it what was it like, was. Okay, you want to earn your allowance this week? Well, <laughs> there, there you it go. Is. There it is. You are yeah. now the proud participant of well, a... Well, $10 was a lot of money when you were six. Yeah, I mean, that when was, what, 50 years it? ago? Yeah, it was absolutely. Just, you know, that was back in the dark ages. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> so do you have anything else over there? Um, let's see here. Um... <laughs> Do I have anything else? Boy, is that a loaded question. Well, no, just no, quit it. Just kidding. We don't, um, we don't go there. No. It also, one little change we've done on the architecture of the site is we've had some requests for this. Is We're going to make some changes on organization of stuff so it's easier for people to find information. Mm -hmm. You now see a uh, link right under our news or homepage link over here on our menu mm -hmm. that goes to fire reports. And this is where you'll find most of our fire coverage that we've had quite a few interests because people want to know where they can find it. Because the yes. um, kind of interesting thing is... Um, they want to find it quick. Yeah, but also I think from the pictures and stuff of this last fire, especially mm -hmm. the slideshow that Eric Pahovich uh, mm -hmm. sent us, um, there's some some really spectacular photos in those. And some mm -hmm. of those uh, individual photos, we were looking at the logs, some of the individual mm -hmm. photos have been viewed five or 600 times. On, really? Yeah, Very some of the individual nice. photos. Mm -hmm. so, uh, mm -hmm. so that's, if you're looking for coverage of recent fire stuff, and um, for example... Because lots of times things will go off our site fairly quickly on a busy news day. Yes. Things will drop they down. Will you know, like, off. where were they? Mm -hmm. So if you want to look at um, coverage on fires, mm -hmm. it will be under the fire reports button. Okay. On the left-hand okay. side. That's net. That's Always just... adding to the site. The pine tree dot net. That's the hope, it. at least. Yes. We keep adding to it. Absolutely. Absolutely. And uh, state news. My little state and I'll be quiet hog. for a while because I've been a mic hog. No, that's again. okay. Okay. You can All mic, right. you can mic the <laughs> hog or hog the mic or whatever <laughs> you want to call it. Um, interesting headlines from the state today. Number of Americans without health insurance climbs. This is from the LA Times. The number of Americans without health insurance rose last year from 44.8 million or 15.3 percent of the population to 47 million or 15.8 percent the census bureau reported today so this is interesting people are either electing not to get health insurance right or they've lost their jobs and they don't have uh, health insurance anymore another one from the sacramento Bee: disagreements aired over plan to clear cut levies huh. and deep disagreements continue to fracture a federal policy that has uh, that could cause all trees to be clear-cut from Sacramento area levies, as is evidenced by conflicting presentations at a conference on the issue underway in Sacramento on Tuesday. And kind of another little local note on the business, on a business note, mm -hmm. is we had the pleasure of attending a couple business ribbon cuttings today yes, from the Chamber very of Commerce. Nice. And Murphy's Property Professionals, they mm -hmm. have opened a new real estate office in downtown, in Murphy's, right there by Alchemy, mm -hmm. and they fed us a a wonderful lunch. It was uh, lunch, and then after that, we went over to Sweet Peas Children's Boutique, mm -hmm. and that's at 88 Highway 4, yes. next to the pharmacy there. Uh -huh. And it was uh, it was we and we had the pleasure. Our hosts were Diane and Betty at Murphy's Property Professionals, and Sarah at the Consignment Boutique. Very nice. And they also have maternity clothes. One of oh, the only places they? in the county, in the county that is has she has maternity, maternity clothes. clothes. Not that I. Need well, it. I may look it, but I'm I'm not maternity, currently with child. Well, or maternity imposed <laughs> or, or inclined. That's the word I'm looking for. Yeah. Inclined. Yes. Um, so go by and visit them because mm -hmm. we want to encourage businesses in the area. It's nice. Yes. This is in the last week we've had three or four we've new had, ones open. Yes, definitely. Um, so that shows progress. Mm -hmm. And go by, 
Go buy a house or buy clothes, even if you don't need them, just to just to support the new businesses. They could buy my house. There you go. That's right. My yeah. house will be up for sale. Or they could list it. I already have someone listing it. Oh, you already have a listing yes. agent. Okay. That's gold country realty. Ah, okay. See, the Glanvilles. Okay. I think we're ready for weather. Are we ready for weather? I think we are. Right. Let's see. Let's see. Do we should check our should time. we do a uh, should we do like a couple minutes of national news? Okay. Should we do? I it? wasn't quite finished with my state news, so I'm oh, going to go okay. back to Sorry, my state. Okay. Sorry, let's do that. Because this is uh, this is like home from home. Okay. Sutter sues Placer. Did you hear about this? <laughs> Sutter oh, County has gone boy. to court to challenge neighboring Placer County's approval of more than 14,000 homes on the county line. That's from the Sacramento Bee, and that could have been. Tuolumne sues Calaveras a couple years ago. Yeah, could have been. Mm -hmm. Could have been. Could have been. And I guess the top of the national news on the political front is what they are calling on the Hill broke oh. back bathroom. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, say it isn't so. Say yes, it isn't it's so. broke back bathroom. <laughs> and this is the Republican senator oh. uh, <laughs> who has come out and proclaimed, no, I am not gay. Um... So, there we go. Okay. And also a touch on national news is CBS, since our ratings for the Calaveras Nightly News have consistently surpassed Miss Kirk. Right. Just kidding. Uh, they are sending we'll be her... the new Nightly News host. Yes. <laughs> they are sending Katie Kirk on a tour of Syria and Iraq in order to revive newscast. Um, and there they go. So they... Really? Yes. <laughs> From the morning news, morning show, entertainment show to Iraq within a year for her? Yes. Well, that proves, will prove her hard news skills, right? Yeah, apparently. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Arnold. Arnold. Mostly clear, 66 degrees, a high of 93 on tom for tomorrow, mm -hmm. a low of 67 on Wednesday night. Uh, Thursday will have a high of 94. Oh, that's warm for Arnold. And a high mm -hmm. of 91 on Friday. Yes. Fair Valley weather. Wednesday, partly cloudy, a high of 83 degrees. Thursday, partly cloudy, a high of 82 degrees. And Friday, mostly sunny at 80 degrees. And for Murphy, Is it hot, it hot, is hot, hot, yes. hot, 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 hot? We hot. have tomorrow a high of 103 oh. in Murphy's tomorrow. <clears throat> and it will chill down to a relatively uh, cool, cool 99 degrees on Thursday, Thursday and then drop down to 94 on Friday. Friday. Yes, and Angels Camp, another blistering Wednesday of 102 degrees. Mm. Thursday, 98 degrees, and Friday, mostly sunny, but 92 degrees. And for, a, our, for our viewer in Bangor, Maine, we'd like to thank you for stopping by. And we are looking at a high of 79 today, a low of 51, a high of 79 tomorrow, a high of 75 with a few showers on Thursday, mm -hmm. and a high of 74 on Friday. Wow. So it looks like a good week to be in Bangor. It does. It does. Weather for Copperopolis, Tuesday, 99 degrees. That's today. Wednesday, 103 degrees. Thursday, 100 degrees. And Friday, 97 degrees. So, what about Valley Springs? You may be able to bring that up faster than oh, me. I was. I was moving over to something else. Okay. Yeah. What's well, this kind Valley of interesting thing? Oh, okay, go ahead go there. Ahead. No. Oh, One of yes, the biggest sources of Hillary Clinton's campaign funding mm -hmm. is a small house, a you lime know? green bungalow, mm -hmm. in the flight path of San Francisco's air. It's the members of the Paw family. They've mm -hmm. donated over $45,000. And in, in all, all the Paws have do donated over $200,000 mm, to Democratic County in the 12th. So, wow. There you go. It's a very small house, apparently. It is a small house, mm -hmm. but it's big for big for cash. Big for cash. Big for cash. Valley Springs, Tuesday, one hundred one degrees. Wednesday, one hundred four degrees. Thursday, one hundred two degrees, and Friday, a cool ninety five degrees. And we thank you for stopping by. Mm -hmm. We really do, and uh, we will see you tomorrow night. Yes. And 
Have a great night. Good night. Thank you.